Welcome to City Edition, the City of Bend's video news magazine featuring programs and policies of our city government. Hello, I'm Laura Rumpler, the city's communications manager. And in this video, we're gonna take a unique look at a component of our transportation system, roundabouts. The City of Bend receives numerous inquiries, both regionally and nationally, about this innovative approach to transportation and moving our traffic through our community that is both effective and aesthetically pleasing. The City of Bend, Oregon selected the use of roundabouts after studying it for a long time to come up with a solution that was a diversion from our standard four-way stoplights and four-way stops, something that would keep traffic moving, something that was aesthetically pleasing, and environmentally friendly. The City of Bend has created this video to not only educate our own citizens on the use of roundabouts and why we employ them, but to also assist other cities in the many questions that we have regarding why we built roundabouts, how efficient are they. We get a lot of inquiries and a lot of communities wanting to find new, new solutions and so we've created this video to try to help them and our own community as well. The, the City of Bend primarily um, became interested in roundabouts because of the safety benefits as well as the, um, the visual benefits. They're a lot more attractive than a traffic signal. Um, one of the disadvantages of a traffic signal is you, you need to have auxiliary lanes. Uh, you need to have left turn pockets and sometimes right turn pockets and sometimes you also need to widen the approach just to handle the stacking that the signal needs. Whereas the roundabout, we can go with the single lane approaches and keep things really compact and have one lane approaches along the corridor. The advantage of a roundabout over a traffic signal is for essentially 23 hours out of the day, the traffic moves through at relatively ease with very little holdup. Traffic signals, you've still got all the queuing that occurs even on off-peak hours. Actually, private developers were the ones that brought it to the, brought it to the city, and the first one that went in, uh, Colorado and Century, was a privately funded project. Um, SDC reimbursable, but it was a privately funded project. And um, the, I believe it was Brooks Resources, Mike Holleran, was the one that took the bull by the horns and got that one through all the red tape and whatnot. There was a lot of opposition to roundabouts before that. Well, we'd, we'd seen them in Europe, and I'd, I'd served on the Transportation Commission before, and had looked at these roundabouts in the proper location as being an ideal solution for traffic and safety. So we did go to the state, and the state, ODOT, is a, is a very effective and good bureaucracy, but it doesn't make decisions really quickly. So it took us some period of time to convince ODOT that they wanted to let us build the first roundabout on a state highway in the state of Oregon. Uh, I think through Mike's travels uh, on the East Coast and in Europe, his experience with roundabouts, uh, he had visualized how they could be applied here in, uh, in Bend. And actually ODOT, as well as Federal Highway, had been doing a lot of research on the use of roundabouts as a traffic control measure. And so we've been interested in, in the concept of roundabouts uh, on the state highway. Uh, but hadn't really found a location yet where, you know, we wanted to dive in and, uh, and actually implement that strategy. Uh, so really, this was an opportunity. The Westside Traffic Consortium is a group of developers and public institutions, including COCC and the Penn Lapine School District, who had applications uh, pending at the city for uh, land use. And this was in 1999. And the volume of those applications um, brought the city to a point of, of bringing us all together to talk about west side traffic improvements and all, all the applications were for the west side and uh, so this consortium was was brought together as uh, through necessity to uh, address the transportation deficiencies on the west side we had a vision those of us who were talking about it and the west side consortium and others actually the friends of bend were involved as well in the idea that if we could keep bend west of the river free of traffic lights it would do a number of things. Uh, first of all, roundabouts or traffic circles work better when they are working in conjunction with each other than they do if you are platooning cars coming out of a red light into a roundabout. So having a series of them makes great technical sense. But maybe more importantly are the aesthetics and the beauty and the feel and the character and the pedestrian orientation. Uh, part of the reason why the intersection at Century Drive in Colorado uh, presented such a nice opportunity. One, it's a di district level highway for us, uh, was a district level highway for us, which simply means it's, it's primarily local traffic. It functions more of a local arterial than a, than a part of the state highway system. 
a um, lot of repeat traffic and return traffic. And Colorado had been developed in, uh, in a rather progressive uh, design uh, style with the r raised planted median, uh, the single um, a lane in each direction, and the pedestrian facilities. And so, you know, this sort of, this just felt right as far as a location to explore the idea of um, implementing the idea of putting in a roundabout. We're standing in front of our newest roundabout, roundabout number 10, that we've built in the community of Bend. We've, uh, as you can see, it's unfinished. We will complete this with new landscaping and some landscape art that'll go in the middle of the roundabout. Uh, the advantage of a roundabout over an always stop or a signal, um, there's some safety advantages. Um, as well as operational advantages. The safety advantages are that there's fewer conflicts. Well, points of conflict in an intersection are simply opportunities for a collision. And in a signalized intersection, we can count how many opportunities there are, how many spots there are where such a collision might occur. And of course, we're most concerned about those opportunities where they overlap with the crosswalk. There's 32 conflict points at a standard four-leg intersection versus eight at a roundabout. So that's one quarter the number of conflict points. And each conflict point is simpler for the driver to handle. Um, cars are always circulating in the same direction and you're always approaching a conflict from the same spot. Uh, they eliminate all of the head-on and T-bone crashes that can occur at signalized intersections. And those are the ones that really have the potential to injure people. In a signalized intersection, oftentimes you come to it when there's not anybody coming and you have to wait for the phase to go through before you can enter and go through the intersection. In a roundabout, it adjusts automatically. You can go through it with ease if nobody's there and when you have traffic, you wait for your gap and just enter as you, as you have opportunity to go through. And there's also um, some speed advantages on the roundabout and that also contributes to its safety. The, um, the approach speeds on roundabouts are about 15 miles per hour here in Bend and you're much less likely to have a collision at that speed and if you do have a collision it's, it's a much milder collision. We're slowing folks down, um, making them drive the speed limit. Instead of trying to run through a yellow light at 45 miles an hour, we're, we're, they're, they have to go through, through it 15, 20 miles an hour. That's the fastest you can go through it. Well I think of the roundabout it's certainly very creative, it's very cutting edge. I think. That part appeals to, to many in terms of uh, being on the cutting edge of, in terms of technology, but I think there's a sense of uh, rapid growth and being able to respond quickly to growth, and that's really another advantage of a roundabout. They can be installed fairly quickly in, in 60 to 90 days, which is a lot of times twice as fast as a conventional intersection improvement.